There were so many PlayStation 1 games, but which ones are still worth playing? Welcome to Classic Replay. Let's do this. Okay, a quick recap of the Sony PlayStation. The Sony PlayStation was released in September 1995. It competed alongside the Nintendo 64 and Sega Saturn as part of the fifth generation of consoles. The PlayStation was the result of a failed partnership between Sony and Nintendo to create a CD-ROM add-on for the Super Famicom. When Nintendo withdrew, Sony's CEO at the time, Norio Oga, was enraged and appointed executive Ken Kutaragi to develop the PSX in-house with the objective of dethroning Nintendo's Super Famicom. Yes, it's all water under the bridge now, but the birth of the Sony PlayStation gave us some of the best gaming moments and a big fat library of nostalgia. So, let's get it on. Thunderstrike was already a good game, which evolved into an even better one. The physics, campaigns, and look and feel blended into one perfect tactical combat sim. It has all the fun of which today's kids think Nintendo invented. Terrorists have taken over the world and they want to eat you. Set over seven campaigns, you need to bomb them, shoot them, you do that or they do it. In 1996, it felt groundbreaking. Today, you'd be hard pushed to find better thrills than piloting the agile AH-69 Mohawk. This game has five alternative endings not only do people describe this as the ultimate side-scrolling platformer, many also claim it's the best of the series. In fact, in November 1997, Computer and Video Games gave it 100%, and they said, one of the best platform games ever made, a truly epic experience with a wealth of secrets to uncover. The more you play, the better it gets. Hardcore gamers will absolutely love it but so will you. No traction control, no computers, just raw skill. A crazy rally game that binned the rules of the RAC rally. Competitive, fast, and almost ported to the Sega Dreamcast, which no one bought. The Colin McRae rally series is one of those games ingrained in the memories of dads over 30. For a while, it made everything else look like the work of amateurs. Today's kids rely on Lewis Hamilton to teach them in the ways of driving. Back then, we had Colin McRae. Serious gamers mocked Crash Bandicoot. Well, we know they're a special lot. All the games in the series were all created awesomely. Yes, games used to be funny, and there's a reason that half of the population of the UK still have a Sony PlayStation tucked away under the TV. Yes, that reason is Crash Bandicoot Warped. And for those that disagree, you just hate us because you ain't us. This one ruled our lives, packed with levels, packed with secrets, packed with pickups and boss fights. This one still plays a blinder. All right, all right, get out of my way. Destruction Derby is a masterclass in gaming. Everyone must play this and complete it. It's a rite of passage on the PlayStation and it shows you can tolerate insane difficulty and triumph in the face of overwhelming odds and destruction. The only thing missing is being pulled from a burning wreckage. This game is the very epitome of causing so much damage to something that it no longer exists or can be repaired. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not just a driving game, this is a cult classic. It's one of those games you bring out when you've got the house to yourself. It was also a game where Rockstar took a while to catch up. Once you make it out of the underground car park, it adds up to an experience that is sensational and a joyous, essential memory to have. But Driver's greatest legacy is that it's true driving poetry. Is this a game? Is this a film? No, it's Metal Gear Solid. A work of art that hooked a generation. And the same people who played it as kids back in the day are probably still playing it. And I bet you there's so many James Bond fans out there that love this game. 
In fact, this would have made a great 007 game. And I'm surprised it wasn't released as that. I think Metal Gear Solid might have marked the birth of the modern stealth genre. So don't be a weak man. Play this now. A stunning technical racing game with enough fun stuff. There's automatic driving aids, you can tune your car, and even by today's standards, the game design is fantastic. This will even appeal to Sunday drivers. Gran Turismo 2 arrived at the perfect time, when graphics were starting to get a bit good and gameplay was being perfected. Even today, Gran Turismo 2 remains the ultimate driving simulator. Today's kids might laugh, but this was gold back in 1999. Yes, oodles of artistry have been poured into Final Fantasy. There's probably more dialogue of that than Metal Gear Solid. Almost every character has got something to say, and it comes on three discs for a reason. There's massive fights, lots of energy, and sob stories to dent even the hardest heart. What made it even more special is that it knew how to tell a story. Final Fantasy VII is a stunning, moving, beautiful story. And for that reason, it's a timeless classic. I just wanted to start this one by reading the review from Computer and Video Games back in December 1999. They gave this 100% on the PlayStation and went on to say, for a long time, the N64 has kept its head above water with GoldenEye. It's worth owning an N64 just to play its deathmatch games, but now PlayStation owners need not to give the option a second thought. You are going to be playing Quake 2 so much, you won't have time to consider anything else. Now PlayStation has everything. For me personally, one of the truly essential racing games for the PlayStation 1. Yes, it's hard to better the first game, the impact that had, especially in the audio department. So whilst Ridge Racer Type 4 didn't make the world go bananas, it definitely had the looks. And slick racing, the likes Namco, dream up whilst asleep. It's a game that has dragged me back year after glorious year. This was my outrun on the Sony PlayStation. If it was about looks, my wife wouldn't be with me. In fact, Resident Wait. Evil 6 had the looks, but where did it get it? It was the worst of the series. What are you doing here? Resident Evil 2 is the reason millions went out and bought a PlayStation. And this game sold over 5 million copies. Oh, sorry Resident that. Evil 4 is still I tops for me, one but this one made me jump the most. What's I'll leave you to enjoy now? the rest of this clip. Hold on. I don't have a clue. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. But you should be safe inside here. I'm keeping a close eye on things. Back in the day, truly terrifying. Good old Spider-Man. This is a fantastic game. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web, any size, catches thieves, just like spiders. Look Tingling. out, here comes the Spider-Man. Here? here comes the Spider-Man. <laughs> Sorry about that. It still looks good. And I love the way Spidey just leaps from tall buildings. When he spins his web, it feels effective. It's not just a gimmick. This not only looks amazing, but it plays amazing as well. I love all the Street Fighter games, uh, including Street Fighter EX, but this one on the PlayStation 1 has held up the most. But don't slaughter me, that's just my own personal opinion. It's fast and it's deadly. And just look at it, it's an absolute thing of beauty. And the two on two battles are immense. Each player has three different fighting styles, a truly terrific challenge to master. Another game that computer and video games back in September 1998 awarded 100% and they went on to say 
whether you are a casual gamer or after some impressive fighting action or even an arcade nutter wanting to test your skills to the max, Tekken 3 is certainly your best option on the PlayStation. But they also went on to say that the only disappointment is the 17% speed loss in the UK version. So make sure you pick up the NTSC version. The only issue with Silent Hill on the PlayStation 1 is that the PAL version is highly censored but this is Konami vs Capcom in the horror genre. It doesn't quite reach the upper echelons of Resident Evil 2, but at the time, trust me, this was a great start. Whilst the action isn't as intense as Resident Evil, it's definitely equally disturbing. And the second game on the PlayStation 2 is more disturbing than Borat in a thong. Yes, the second game is infinitely better, so check that out as well. But it's the first one that I loved. It's the one I spent the most time with, the one I came back to the most. And for me personally, the music is by far the best of any of the other games. And it's another one where computer and video games scored it 100%. And as with real life, the learning curve will give you sore knees, a broken controller and crippled thumbs. Back in the day, it was the ultimate extreme game, and what a fantastic time to have been alive. Vigilante 8 is all the fun of the school playground, only this time, hide and seek turns into seek and destroy. This is far more than just a deathmatch game. It's more of a shoot 'em up in vehicles, with varying missions to complete and secrets to find, and it's better than Twisted Metal 2 because it keeps shooting close to its heart. For me personally, this is a dream, mean, driving machine. And there's also a fantastic two-player mode. Now, if ever a game was still worthy of a test flight, it's gotta be Wipeout 3. Whether or not it's a better game than 2097, well, that's up to the individual player to decide. But if you enjoyed the series, this isn't an entry that you'd want to miss, but it's the special edition version that solidified the series and this game as the most enjoyable on the PlayStation. It's like the masterpiece that was Wipeout 2097 was just a dry run for special edition. Making it into the honorable mentions is Einhander, fantastic brilliant shoot 'em up really shows what the uh, PlayStation 1 was capable of in the 2D department it was like look out R type here I come and the Royal Rumble of shoot 'em up games on the PlayStation and if this one's in your collection and you're like me you love your shoot 'em ups you'll never stop playing this is definitely one in the eye to Sega Saturn owners Oh God, I had this on the PC and I spent so many hours, days, weeks, months playing this until completion, even with friends. And the crashes in this game were absolutely spectacular. But don't worry, you'll still sleep soundly at night. Another PC port, I hear you saying, that's criminal, but it's been done to absolute perfection. And I can't recommend this enough on the PlayStation 1. It might not be the greatest racing game ever, but surely it's up there. It's got to be one of the best. Ace Combat 3 is one of the noisiest, coolest air combat simulators on the PlayStation 1. Visually, it is about as good as you'll get on the PlayStation. The graphics are sharp, fast, and there's a bit of a futuristic style about it. I can't talk for everyone, but this made my eyes happy. Quite simply, it is the finest flight sim action game ever uh, on the PlayStation 1, and it's so much fun to play. It might just be me, but I think Aliens Resurrection on the PS1 is fantastic, it's fabulous. These blood-sucking, neck-snapping aliens are guaranteed to take your breath away. 
in what I can only describe as one of PlayStation's genius moments. There's a lot of fun to be had here if you're into your Corridor shenanigans. This one, like its predecessor, is based on the classic Chinese novel, Water Margins. Also, this game takes inspiration from Tolkien's Silmarillion and The Lord of the Rings, as the ancient people are known as the Sindar, which gets their name from the Elvish people. Now, once again, computer and video games back in June 2000 gave this 100%, and they went on to say, Though it doesn't have the visual flair of Final Fantasy, it's instantly more playable, immediately rewarding, and a lot more fun. I can't believe that Vagrant Story was a commercial failure. The developers cited that they only had a low advertising budget. For me, it's the perfect game. And the PS1 version of Vagrant Story appears in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And surprise, surprise, this one scored 100% in computer and video games back in July 2000. And they went on to say, this is still in my top 10 PlayStation games ever made. Clear a space in your life and buy it. Now this is my number one pick for the PlayStation. It doesn't mess with a good formula. It plays brilliantly even today. The amount of options you get in this game is phenomenal and there's just been subtle changes over the original that make it shine brighter than before. And the visuals still look sweet. A multi-tap was essential for this game. The PS1 was on borrowed time around now, but Smackdown 2 was the perfect swan song for the ailing machine. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, bye!